Today we're going to look to answer a pretty commonly asked question about the inverse trig functions. And that is, why do we often use arc sine or arc tangent or arc cosine instead of sine inverse or tangent inverse or cosine inverse? In other words, what does this like prefix arc have to do with anything involving the inverse of these functions? But maybe before we do that, I'd like to invite everyone who hasn't subscribed to the channel to subscribe to the channel. I've got a big goal of hitting pi 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So maybe click that subscribe if you hadn't. Okay, so let's get back into it. Okay, so let's recall that the arc sine of x or the inverse sine of x is equal to an angle theta if and only if sine of theta is equal to x and theta comes from the interval from minus pi over two to pi over two. So as some examples, the arc sine of zero is zero. That's because sine of zero is zero. The arc sine of one is pi over two. That's because sine of pi over two is one. Then furthermore, something like arc sine of square root of two over two would be pi over four. Okay, so now let's dive into the real question of this video, which is why do we have this prefix arc here? And in order to do that, we need to think about a circle with radius one half centered at the point one half zero. So you can easily calculate the equation of that circle to be the quantity x minus half squared plus y squared equals one quarter. But multiplying that out and moving some things around, you'll see that the top half of that circle can be described by the equation y equals the square root of x minus x squared. And now towards our goal, we'll want to think about the arc along that circle from the origin to some arbitrary point in the top half and compare that to the distance between the origin and kind of the end point of that arc. Okay, so now that we've got that picture in our mind, let's maybe start to look at some of the calculations involved. So let's start our calculation by finding the length of this arc, starting at the origin and ending at the coordinate t comma, the square root of t minus t squared. And so that's given from the fact that this top half of the circle has the equation y equals the square root of x minus x squared. So if we recall, our standard formula for arc length is the integral from zero up to the end point, which we're calling t, of the square root of one plus the derivative of the equation of our curve squared dx. Okay, so now we just need to start calculating that stuff. So this is gonna give us the integral from zero to t, and then we have the square root of one plus so let's see, the derivative of this. So let's keep in mind that we could think of this as x minus x squared to the half power. So the power rule will bring a half out front and turn that into a minus half, but the minus half is like having a square root in the denominator. So that gives us two times the square root of x minus x squared in the denominator. And then in the numerator, we'll have the derivative of the inside. So that'll be one minus two x. And then we have to square all of that because that's built into our arc length formula. Okay, so we've got something like that. Now let's start simplifying. That gives us the integral from zero to t. Then we have the square root of one plus, let's see, that's gonna give us four x squared minus four x plus one over um, four times x minus x squared. Okay, so again, that's from multiplying out what's in parentheses right there. Okay, but now giving ourselves a common denominator, we'll probably want to write this number one as 4x minus 4x squared over 4x minus 4x squared. So like I said, it has a common denominator. And then this 4x will cancel with this 4x, this minus 4x squared will cancel with that minus 4x squared, leaving us with just one in the numerator. So that gives us the integral from zero to t of one over the square root of four times x minus x squared dx. Now we can take that half out 
and that'll leave us with one half. The half comes from taking the square root of four, the integral from zero to t of one over the square root of x minus x squared dx. Okay, so I think that's a nice formula for the length of this curve where we're ending at this arbitrary point. But let's recall our real goal was to write this length of this curve as a function of the length of this blue line. In other words, the distance of this point from the origin. Okay, so let's see if we can finish that part. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. So we just got done showing that the length of this pink arc over here was given by half and then this integral here. I'm gonna go ahead and give this the name f of t. So that's almost what we want. Like I said before, what we really want is this, instead of being a function of t, a function of the length of this blue line here, the distance from the origin to this point. So let's calculate that. But since these are just two coordinates, we can calculate that with the distance formula. So that's going to be the square root of the difference in the x coordinates squared minus the difference in the y coordinates squared. But since we're starting at the origin, it's just this x coordinate squared plus this y coordinate squared. That gives us t squared plus t minus t squared. So that's pretty nice because here the square and the square root cancel. So that means we've got a cancellation inside of this radical, meaning that this length right here is really just the square root of t. Okay, so that's nice. But now if this length is the square root of t, that means that t is equal to this length squared. So we can write this length here squared. Well, let's maybe introduce some variables here just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Let's say this length is equal to r. So that means t is equal to r squared. But in the end, that means that f of r, in other words, our function, which is arc length, as a function of this distance, is equal to one half times the integral from zero to r squared of one over the square root of x minus x squared dx. So something like that. Now we'd like to find a nicer version of this function. And I think the best way to do this is by taking the derivative and then noting that its derivative is actually the derivative of a well-known function. Okay, so let's do that. So f prime of r, where we're thinking about that as the derivative with respect to r, is equal to, let's see, we'll have to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which inserts this r squared into our integrand. And then since we've got a non-trivial function up here, we have to take the derivative of that non-trivial function. The derivative of r squared is two r. So that gives us two r over two, times one over the square root of r squared minus r to the fourth. But let's note that we can factor an r squared out of the denominator inside of the radical. Bringing it outside of the radical gives us r. That'll cancel this r in the numerator and we're left with um, one over the square root of one minus r squared. So we've got f prime of r is equal to, well, that thing over there. Now we're almost home free. So let's recall that f of r was the length of this arc here as a function of the distance of this point from the origin. And we just determined that the derivative of f was equal to one over the square root of one minus r squared. Furthermore, we can very easily see that f evaluated at zero is zero. So we've, and that's because that gives us kind of a trivial arc here, or an arc of zero length. Now we've got an initial value problem for our function. So we can take the antiderivative of both sides here, but this antiderivative here is a well-known function that gives us f of r equals the arc sine of r plus some constant. But then evaluating at our initial condition will tell us that this constant is equal to zero. So we've got f of r equals the arc sine of r. And that 
finally kind of wraps a bow on the answer to this question. Why do we use this prefix arc to define the inverse sine function? Well, it's because the arc sine is the length of this arc length if we have the following setup. And that's a good place to stop.